Now, all of this activism in the 50s and 60s does start to find its way before the Supreme Court and in a number of cases that are directly related to a lot of these activist movements. The Supreme Court in the 1950s had failed in protecting civil liberties during the Red Scare. Remember that Supreme Court ruling, which had said it was perfectly legal to lock up people for being communist, even if they hadn't done anything illegal. Uh, however, as we get into the 1960s, the court begins to reinforce civil liberties. For example, in 1957, they start tossing out convictions of many people who have been tried and imprisoned due to the HUAC hearings or the House and American Activities uh, Committee uh, hearings. So people who had been arrested for contempt of uh, court uh, or refusal to testify before these committees were having their convictions overturned. And increasingly, the Supreme Court is upholding the idea of free speech rights. In the late 50s and early 60s, we see a pair of Supreme Court cases about freedom of speech that are related to the African-American civil rights movement. For example, in 1958, in a court case titled NAACP versus Alabama, there was some conversation about uh, how Al the state of Alabama wanted to make the membership list of the NAACP public. The Supreme Court, however, ruled that in the case of private uh, organizations like the NAACP, that privacy of membership lists could be upheld because that would help to protect free speech. Basically, the Supreme Court was saying, if these individuals were publicly identified uh, in Alabama, they would likely face uh, violence and discrimination, right? That would have a chilling effect on their ability to speak freely and advocate. So the Supreme Court let that stand. And another ruling in 1964, New York Times versus Sullivan, this was a ruling brought up because the New York Times published a series of articles in which they criticized uh, the Southern system of segregation. And in this case, the Supreme Court upheld the right of citizens and media to express dissent and to criticize the government, right? So that the New York Times was perfectly within line to criticize this legal system of segregation in the South, and Southern states could not sue them for libel just because they disliked what the New York Times had to say about them. We also see uh, an expansion of civil liberties uh, throughout the 1960s. In 1967, in the case Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court will over overturn bans on interracial marriage. So the Lovings were a couple in Virginia. Um, the husband was white, the wife was black. They had fallen in love and they wanted to get married. However, Virginia had a law that banned interracial marriages. And so they actually had to travel out of state to get legally married. And when they returned to Virginia, they, they were arrested and they were essentially told either you get divorced or you're going to prison for violating this ban on interracial marriage. They were threatened with a five-year prison sentence if they refused. Instead of taking that deal, they sued, and the Supreme Court said that states could not dictate who can and can't get married in terms of uh, based on racial uh, descriptions anyways. We also see the Supreme Court ban discrimination in rental or sale housing in the case of Jones versus Alfred H. Mayer Company in 1968. But it's really going to be three cases in the mid-60s and the early 70s that really kind of define the Supreme Court's direction when it comes to civil liberties. The first of these cases is Griswold v. Connecticut. In 1965, the Supreme Court heard a challenge from a couple uh, who were arguing that the Connecticut's uh, law about access to birth control was unconstitutional. And particularly, they wanted to challenge a ban on birth control and many states having this rule that you could only access birth control if you were married. So the Supreme Court in Griswold v. Connecticut 
overturned bans in birth control, the, which would extend the use of birth control to women, in, including women who were not married. And in the same ruling also reaffirmed the idea of a right to privacy. So they said that Connecticut in dictating uh, this ban on birth control, even among married couples, was essentially getting involved in what Mary, what consenting adults were doing behind closed doors, right? So that was an invasion of privacy by the government. The Constitution says nothing about a right to privacy, so it really comes from Supreme Court case law. And Griswold versus Connecticut is one of the earlier cases in which we have this explicit discussion of the idea of a right to privacy. So if you believe you are entitled to a right to privacy today or expect that, then you should thank uh, Griswold v. Connecticut for putting that on people's radar. The next case during this time period that still will impact you today, I guarantee you are familiar with this, is Miranda v. Arizona in 1966. I guarantee you, if you've watched any cop shows or legal shows, you know about this case, at least somewhat. This case, the Supreme Court ruled that individuals under arrest must be informed of their rights. So the Miranda rights, this is where they come from out of this case of Miranda v. Arizona. So you could probably say it by heart if you've watched enough cop shows like I have. You have the right to remain silent, right? Anything you do or say can be held against you in a court of law. You have right to an attorney, right? And if you cannot afford one, will be provided for you. So this notion that you had to remind people of their rights is reinforced by this ruling at the Supreme Court And specifically, they also say that if a law enforcement officer fails to read you your rights, then you are allowed to walk free, right? That this is a requirement. This is not a suggestion. This is a requirement that you be read your Miranda rights. Lastly, one of the more controversial Supreme Court rulings out of this time period is the ruling of Roe versus Wade in 1973, in which the Supreme Court argues that women have a constitutionally guaranteed right to abortion by arguing that women, basically, this was by attempting to ban abortion, the government was trying to regulate women's bodies. And so again, interpreting this through the lens of a right to privacy and a right to bodily freedom. We're going to talk more about Roe v. Wade uh, a little bit later um, because this is a very controversial ruling. At the time of Roe v. Wade, a lot of people were arguing to make abortion legal because of the lack of regulation of the procedure. Many women, even though it was illegal, still sought abortions. And so they were either faced with having to uh, travel to places where they could secure legal abortions, having to try to uh, pay doctors on the slide to be able to do the procedure, which again, you had to have money for, or a lot of women tried to either go to kind of what we call back alley providers, uh, which were frequently unsafe and lacked medical training, or try to induce abortions themselves. So this is why you'll frequently see uh, choi- uh, pro-choice people talk about the idea of the coat hanger, right? That there are many different ways to try to induce uh, abortion at home that oftentimes are very, very dangerous to the life of the woman. And so it wasn't just women's liberation that was pushing for the legalization of abortion, but also many religious groups, which kind of seems strange to us today, because we associate um, more of the uh, anti-abortion or pro-life movement as being deeply religious. But there are a lot of religious folks who were agitating at this time in the early 70s and late 60s for legalization of abortion, arguing that that was the more compassionate route, right, to ensure the the lives uh, of these women and to not endanger uh, them. Okay, but we'll talk about this more because this ruling becomes a lightning rod. This will become important in the formation of the modern conservative movement that we'll talk about as we get to the 1970s. So this is definitely not the last time we're discussing this particular case.